Hello, David. Are you ready to learn about electric shock? Good. Electric shock is one of the most serious and immediate risks facing a welder. You can receive an electric shock when you touch two metal objects that are electrically hot. David, in front of you is a live wire that's been severed. If you were to touch both wires... David, I said if. Please, listen carefully. If you were to touch both wires, your body would experience an electric shock. Thankfully, the voltage across these particular wires is relatively low. But let's pretend for a moment, David, that you are up high, like on a ladder. David, no. Don't climb the ladder. I'm saying, let's pretend. If you were high on a ladder, even a low voltage shock could very well startle you enough to send you falling, likely resulting in gruesome permanent injury or even death. Don't worry, David. Stu is a cartoon and can recover from any injury. The severity of an electric shock is greatly influenced by the magnitude of the current flowing through your body. Also important to the severity is the type of current producing the shock, alternating current or direct current. Didn't pay attention in physics class, did we? Well, let's try illustrating it another way. This is Brian. Brian is a low voltage direct current. If you were to come into contact with Brian, the initial shock to your body may not be severe. However, if you were to remain in contact with Brian for an extended period of time, the chance of bodily injury increases. Thankfully, you are able to let go of Brian at any time. However, we've invited your friend Ted to be high voltage alternating current. If you were to come into contact with Ted, not only would the initial shock be extremely dangerous, but alternating current can also initiate uncontrollable muscle contractions that can create an inability to let go of Ted and even stop your heart. This is a potentially deadly situation. Go ahead, Ted. I know you don't want to do it, but we're teaching valuable safety lessons here and it's important to demonstrate so that David really gets it. Thank you, Ted! There you are. You see, David, in welding, you will encounter both alternating current and direct current at varying voltages. All can be very dangerous, even fatal, under certain circumstances. An electric shock received while welding can range anywhere from 20 to 100 volts and is called a secondary or welding voltage shock. The voltage inside of welding equipment, however, is commonly much higher, ranging from 120 to 575 volts or greater. An electric shock of this magnitude is called a primary voltage shock and is more than enough to cause severe injury or death. Now, David, there's no reason to be afraid, but it is important to clearly understand the risks involved when working with electricity so that you can take the proper safety precautions to ensure a long and safe career in the welding industry. Ready to continue, David? Great. Let's discuss primary electric shock. Primary electric shock is very dangerous because it is a much greater voltage than secondary or welding voltage. Remember Ted and Brian? Of course you do. Primary electric shock is Ted. Now don't worry, David. We're going to talk about how to prevent you from coming in contact with Ted. You can receive a primary electric shock by touching two electrically hot wires or if you touch a lead or other electrically hot component inside the welder while touching the welder case or any grounded metal while the power is on. Nice try, David. But turning the welder power switch off does not turn the power off inside the welder. To turn off the power inside the welder, you must unplug the welder or the power disconnect switch must be turned off. Very good, David. Now, was your welder installed by a qualified electrician? Oh, David. Your welder should be installed by a qualified electrician so that it's connected to the correct voltage and is properly grounded. If the welder is not connected in the right way to the power source, the case of the welder may become electrically hot, which can be very dangerous. But when a case is properly grounded, a fuse will blow if a problem occurs. 
disconnecting the power and letting you know that it's time for a repair. Are you satisfied? Would you like me to turn the power back on? Are you sure? Okay! David, do you see where you went wrong and put yourself in danger of a primary electric shock? Thank you, Ted. You closed up your welder case, which was very good, but repairs should always be done by a qualified technician, and you are not qualified to perform repairs. But. Now you've learned something. I think we all have. Perhaps I should have started you off with secondary electric shock, which is usually a bit less severe. Secondary electric shock happens when your body completes the circuit between your electrode cable and the metal you are working on. Remember, David, electric shock can kill. Don't touch electrically live parts or electrodes with skin or wet clothing. Develop safe work habits. Make sure your skin is fully insulated from the area you're working on and from any grounding source. Always wear dry gloves in good condition to make sure you're being properly protected. You need a helmet. Very good, David. Oh, I almost forgot. Are you wearing a wedding ring or any metal jewelry? Ah, uh, yes. Those have to go before welding. Don't worry, you can put them back once we've finished. There we go. Sometimes welding must be performed under electrically dangerous conditions, such as damp locations, on metal structures like floors, gratings, scaffolds, or ladders, or in cramped positions. When working in conditions like these, or any situation in which there is a high risk of unavoidable accidental contact with the workpiece or ground, use the following equipment. Semi-automatic DC constant voltage welder, DC manual stick welder, AC welder with reduced voltage control. Always inspect your electrode holder before turning the welder on. Go ahead, David. Sorry about that, David. My bad. The plastic or fiber insulation on your electrode holder protects you from touching the electrically hot parts inside. If the holder is damaged... Now David, you're not MacGyver. Replace the holder if it is damaged unless you have replacement parts. Also examine your cable. If any of the insulation on your cable is damaged, it is possible to repair it. Now David, you can repair it using good electrical tape but you must check your local codes for the tools you're using and the type of work you're doing. It may not be permissible to repair your cable. You may have to replace it. Now, your electrode holder and cable are in perfect order, David, so you're ready to rock. Remember, a stick electrode is always hot and the voltage is highest when you are not welding. This is called open circuit voltage. Oh, David. Always treat your welder with respect. Welding can be very safe as long as you practice safe work habits and keep your environment as low risk as possible. 